Hey there, my name is Julian, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can enable signups, logins, social logins, gated content payments, and a whole bunch more on your WordPress site using MemberStack. So the first thing that I want to say is this video right here is made to be a generalized WordPress and MemberStack video. We're not going over anything specific for page builders. We have the same tutorials that are made specific for Gutenberg, Bricks Builder, Elementor, and Divi. So just go to the links in the description below if you're using one of those page builders and watch the tutorial that is going to be much more suited to your workflow. In this video, my goal is to show you the general ways that you can add member stack to any site, regardless of if it's in WordPress, and uh, how that looks and functions. So what we have over here is a pretty much blank WordPress site. We've made a home and a gated page, which right now are just two blank pages. And uh, in this case, we have Gutenberg installed because it is what comes pre-installed with WordPress. That being said, the goal of this video is that these principles apply no matter what page builder you are using. So let's get into it. The first thing that we need to do is actually install MemberStack. So what we're going to do is go to our plugins panel over here. We're going to click add new plugin and we're going to search for the MemberStack plugin. Just like so and then we should see the member stack plugin right here once that is installed we are going to go ahead and activate it and the next thing that you need to do is create a member stack account and create a member stack app go to the link in the description to create your member stack account it will guide you through the whole process so now that that's done let's go over to our member stack tab over here and as we can see the first thing it wants is our app id so once you've created your member stack app what you're going to see is this getting started page right here if you don't see it simply click get started up here in the left sidebar now we've already installed the member stack plugin. So the next thing we need to do is add the member stack app ID. So let's go ahead and click copy on that. And then let's head over back into WordPress. Okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and paste in our app ID and hit save. And as we can see, your site is connected to member stack. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you are going to want to add an add, add on for your page builder if you use one. As we can see, we have Gutenberg enabled. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, and the next thing that I want to show you is short code. So with, you can work with member stack using HTML data attributes. And also if you prefer short codes, you can use that. So I'm going to show you both methods in this video. We're going to go ahead and leave our short codes page open right here so that we can work on the other page and um, we always have access to those short codes. So let's go to pages right now and let's go to the home page. Let's click at it again. Here I am in Gutenberg, but regardless of where you are, the principles should apply. So the first thing we're going to do is use short codes. Let's go ahead and add a short code block like so. Let's go to our short codes and let's get the member stack signup form like that. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different options that you can add, such as redirect, plan ID, button text, passwordless social, and all of the different social providers. We're just going to keep it simple for now and just add the basic member stack signup uh, short code. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Let's hit save. And then let's head on over to our live page and see what we are left with. So as you can see, here we are, and we have a nice little signup form. So let's just go ahead and enter some stuff in there to test it out. Hit sign up, and it said you've successfully signed up. We haven't set a redirect or anything, so uh, it's just going to keep us on the home page. But here in the inspector, we can check and we can see indeed that you were logged in. This is the email. So this is something that's going to be there in test mode, which you can use for debugging, for building your site, for all of that. So let's go ahead and head to our member stack dashboard to make sure that indeed our new member is there. And what do you know, before we even refresh, our new member is right there. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is set up a sign up or sorry, a login form. Uh, but this time I'm going to do it using pre-built modals and data attributes. So let's head back on over here to our page and we're going to want to create a button below this, which has a login form. So let's go ahead and get that created now. Go over here and let's just do a custom HTML block like so. And we're going to create a button. So first, let's just create a button. And let's make that button say log in. It's a very basic, completely unstyled HTML button. Let's head back on over here. As we can see, we have a button, but it doesn't do anything. So here's how you use member stack to make it do something. 
Uh, first thing that I want to say is our full catalog of data attributes is going to be in the link in the description. Um, right now we have it on Bricksboard. Pretty soon it's going to be on the member stack WordPress site. So we have a whole bunch of different stuff here that we can use to create custom forms. We can use to open modals. We can use to gate content. We can really use these attributes to do anything. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to search for modal. And as we can see, data MS modal equals login. And I can actually just copy those right from here. So data MS modal, let's head back on over here and let's edit our HTML and add an attribute. Just like that, data dash MS dash modal equals quote, login quote. Just like that, that simple. Let's hit save. Let's head back on over here. And as we can see our lovely little button, if we click it now, a nice login modal pops open and we have Google auth enabled by default, which is pretty cool. So that is how you get that working. Now, the next thing to talk about is actually gating content. That is one of the most important aspects of member stack. So let's go on over here to our gated content page and let's actually simulate a logged out member and see what we can see. So I'm refreshing right now, and here we are on this gated page. Nothing is stopping us from viewing the content on this page. Obviously, we want to fix that. So let's go on over here to our member stack dashboard. Let's go to gated content, and let's add a new group. I'm going to call this gated, and uh, you can use this to gate content to all members, so anyone who's logged in, which we're going to do right now, or you can use it to gate content to specific members. So we're not going to talk about plans in this video. There's going to be more videos that talk specifically about using plans in member stack. Um, but you can use that to, let's say you had a language course gate content to only show people who are learning Spanish. You only want to show them their stuff in Spanish, right? So you can use that. Let's click all members for now and let's add a restricted URL. Our URL is gated, so we're going to leave it as that. And then here you would usually enter some access denied page, some upgrade page, but in this case, it's our homepage. So I'm actually going to leave this blank. And uh, this, what you can see right here is another attribute. So we see data-ms-content ID gated. So if we add this right now to any element that we want, what's going to happen is this element is going to be hidden to anyone who in this case isn't logged in or if we had it set to a plan, whatever it was. Uh, but we can use this to gate not only entire URLs, but just little elements on the page. And since WordPress allows us to actually edit the server code, this stuff is all server side gated. It's totally secure. So let's go ahead and save our gated content group. And then let's head back on over into WordPress. And let's actually go over here and simply go to our member stack plugin. Now, if we go to gated content and hit refresh, as we can see, our gated content group is now here. If we go back to this page here, remember we're logged out. We know that because of the inspector, which says you are logged out. So now if I refresh, it is going to redirect me fully secure back to the home page. So let's go ahead and create an account just like this, enter some stuff in, and then let's navigate ourselves. Now you'd probably do this yourself through a redirect, but let's set this to gated. So it takes us to that page. Now, as we can see, we have access to gated content. So what I want to do on this page is I want to show you two things. One, I want to show you how you can, using a modal, very simply allow users to edit their own information. And then I want to show you how you, you can display that information back to them, which, you know, it seems like pretty simple stuff, but that, along with what we've already gone over, is enough for the vast majority of, of your use cases. So let's head back on over here into Gutenberg. This is all saved. Now let's go to our gated page and click edit. So here we are. And again, in this case, what we're going to use is the custom HTML block, because again, I want to show you this in a way that isn't specific to Gutenberg. So let's do custom HTML block. And right here, we're going to do two separate things. First, we are just going to create a div like so. And in this div, we are just going to say, welcome back member and then we're going to create a button like so and that button is going to say log in so let's go ahead and save that and take a look at what we're left with on the front end so as we can see over here we have welcome back member and we have this button which i don't know why it's going all the way to the left doesn't matter uh, so what we're going to do over here, first things first, is we're going to create a profile form. So in our button, again, we're going to add data-ms-profile. 
total equals quotes profile. Now let's go ahead and save that and see what we are left with. So now, if we click this button, which should probably say profile, right? Not login. I'm sorry about that. Let's change it to profile. Save back over here. Now we have a profile button. And if we click that, this profile modal pops up. I can add a profile image. I can add anything. Let's go ahead and make my name in here. I'm going to say Bob Saget, but let's just stay with Bog Saget. Bog Saget. Alrighty, save that. We are now Bog Saget. So now, how do we actually display that information back to the member in any way? So let's go over here and again in our HTML, let's actually create a span. So let's just do data-ms- oops, sorry, I didn't need that bracket. Sorry. Span, and then data-ms member. And then let's do in here first-name. I'm going to show you how I knew it was first name right in there. Let's close off our span and then let's continue. So span just like that around the word member. So now what's going to happen here is the following. If I save that and I go back over here, as we can see, it is going to say, welcome back. Now, if I go here and I, let's say, remove my name, so I do not have a first name, it is going to instead show me welcome back member. So now if I go back over here and I set this to be now Bob, which is what I meant to do the first time, as we can see, it now says welcome back Bob. So now what we've done is we've allowed members to sign up. We have gated content to only show to those specific members. We've allowed those members to update their own profile and we have shown that information back to the members. So although it all seemed like pretty simple stuff and we finished this up in just a couple of minutes, that is enough for you to work with. So our goal here at MemberStack is not to override your entire way of working. Our goal is to create something where you can build whatever site you or your clients need, and then you simply add MemberStack for the parts that you need it. Other than that, you continue building in your page builder, you continue doing exactly what you are used to. So this should be a perfect starting point for you. That being said, a couple of other things that I do want to talk about in MemberStack. Like I said, I didn't mention plans and plans are a pretty important part of MemberStack. So as you can see here, we've created this uh, test free plan right here called Spanish. Let's say I had a language course, I could create a free plan for each language. Let's say I make this one Arabic. And you know, Throughout your project, you're going to have various things which only apply to those people. Let's say I had a button that said open Spanish course. I don't want to show that to people who have only signed up for the Arabic course. So I can use a combination of plans and gated content to assign members a value and then to show or hide the correct content from them based on that value. Paid plans work in essentially the same way. That being said, they are 100% linked to Stripe. So what that means is that they are completely secure. People cannot fake whether or not they paid you. They have to 100% pay you to get access to that plan. And as soon as their card fails and they stop paying you, however you set it up, they are going to have that content taken away from them. So what MemberStack does is it essentially powers the business brain of your site. And it does that in a way that is very easy for you to set up, but at the same time, very, very scalable. So the final thing that I wanted to mention for you to be aware of is member data. So what we have is custom fields. And like I said, I wrote that attribute there, data MS member first name. That is how I knew which one to do. While you're creating a custom field or after when you're editing it, you can simply see the attribute that you need to add to display that data back to them. And that is exactly how that works. You can hide it from the pre-built UI. You can restrict it so that only the admin can edit it. This is good if you're using uh, custom fields for things, not so much like first name and last name, but for flags in your system, let's say did complete onboarding. You know, you don't want people to be able to change that on their own. You want only you to be able to update it. So you can do that as well. And along with that, there are two more forms of uh, member data. We have metadata, which can only be updated from the admin. And this can be stuff which looks different across members. So let's say we can say, um, let's say, for example, pet value dog. And then on another member, we can do something like pet horse 
We can even do friend. We can do whatever we want because this does not need to be the same across members. And uh, you can use this stuff to do really whatever you want. And the same thing with JSON. But JSON can be updated from the front end as well. So you can use this for things like course progress. I've seen people use this to save conversations when they build an AI chatbot. People do all sorts of things with this. Like I said, our goal here is to give you a framework to build whatever you want to build in the way that you're used to building it. So we here at MemberStack are just getting into WordPress and we are absolutely loving it. But we are a community first product. We've been around for six years and um, our goal is to build whatever it is that you want to build. So if you're using maybe a different page builder we haven't mentioned, if you want to see how to do something that you don't know how to do with MemberStack, simply join our Slack community and let us know. You're going to be in there with other community members, with myself, with other team members, and you can ask us whatever it is that you will want to learn. So thank you so much. I'm excited to see you in the Slack community. I hope this video helps you figure out how to use MemberStack. I will talk to you soon and have a great day.